is true freedom to you, Eddie? True freedom to me um, is when I am completely aligned with myself. And it doesn't matter what's happening around me. Um, if uh, I'm being criticized, if I'm being praised, if I'm being challenged, if I'm making money, if I'm not making money, um, any of those things. Like if I'm totally connected in myself, knowing that I am doing the right things and I'm adhering to the principles I feel in me, then that's freedom for me. It's not, it's not an outward thing. And this is very much what yoga has always taught, mm -hmm. that freedom is inside of us. And my first Sanskrit teacher, Vyas Houston, translated Yoga Sutras and gave it the title, um, The Certainty of Freedom. That was the subtitle that he gave to it. He said that if you follow these teachings and you think about them and you read them, they become a roadmap for your inner consciousness, for your inner states of consciousness, and you can follow them. And the certainty of it is that if you follow it, then you will find inner freedom through traveling along with your, your inner shifts in consciousness mm. um, till you get to that point where there's an unchanging consciousness. Uh, so the certainty of freedom, it's a very interesting way that the, the whole Indic civilization had of looking at spirituality. That yeah, if freedom was contained within us, you had to listen really closely and live accordingly as well. I think it comes back to that whole notion of, you know, everything that we need is already inside of us. It's just about finding it again and but it's there. We just need to connect with it. Yeah, and the tools. And that's what that's what yoga and meditation and all of these um, uh, aligned disciplines are really important mm. for us for for giving us tools so we can learn to listen, so we can learn to connect. It's not easy as saying, oh, just connect to yourself, you know. Oh, just listen to your, you know, some of these tools, yeah. these are the things that actually show us how to do it. You touched on the breath before, our life force, the thing we come into the world with and the thing that, that, that leaves us, our final, our final note in this state of consciousness. Can you talk to us about your experience with the breath? through yoga and meditation? There are a few different schools of uh, breathing in yoga. Um, one is a dynamic form. The popular pranayamas that we see in yoga classes like Kapalabhati and alternate nostril breathing with breath retentions and things like that. And then there's the slower, quieter forms that you find in the Patanjali Yoga Sutras and earlier texts where the idea in pranayama is to really slow your breathing. And you can slow it to the point where sometimes it will pause mm -hmm. for long periods and you find that you're not breathing. And that this is where pranayama moves towards. That you go to a point, it's not about holding the breath, deep breath, it's not even about breathing. It's about suspension of breath. And in those moments where the breath is suspended, that your mind is suspended at the same time. So this is the type of pranayama I'm primarily interested in, um, doing practices that lead you to the suspension of breath. And um, it's a very strange thing because we're used to breathing all the time and we're used to thinking, and our body is used to thinking as well, like if I stop breathing, that's a problem. And so you can be in this state where you're not breathing and all of a sudden a part of you will go, hey, shouldn't I be breathing now? Uh, and but your body is saying, no, you know, you don't really need to be breathing quite yet. Um, and so when you start to go through that and just sit quietly and like not give into it without any forcing, you have very subtle identity shifts. Like, okay, who am I if I'm not my breath? And that's an interesting question because 
our breath is that thing that we don't think about, which is happening all day long that actually keeps us alive, which means we can be who we are. So the idea of, well, who will I be if I don't have my job? You know, well, I have to become someone else, even though I've been something my whole career. If I had to stop teaching yoga, then who would I be? What would I do? I'd probably start a t-shirt company again. You know, who, <laughs> who would you be? Well, I'm still printing t-shirts actually. Who would you be, um, you know, without your job, without your name, without your wardrobe, without your physical capability? With, you know, there are all these things that are very topical. But who would you be without your breath? The obvious answer is, well, you'd be dead without your breath. But in pranayama, all of a sudden, I'm not dead, but I'm not breathing. So who am I? You know, and what's sustaining me in that moment? And that's, and that's very interesting. So, you know, things come into your mind. You get ideas about your inner being and your inner nature of consciousness and, um, and ideas about prana, which is a bioelectric energy that it actually can sustain you in your body for some periods of time without you needing to breathe in or breathe out. Um, you read in the text about uh, breath retentions like this where the breath suspends and the yogis can do it for several hours at a time. Well, I've never met anyone who can do that, but there probably are people who can and you know, why not? So they must be in a very interesting state. 